<sighs> I was on Amazon shopping for a rack mount PDU, as I assume everyone is from time to time, and I ran across this little gem. Now this is made by Technical Pro or just branded by them, I'm not sure, it's not a brand name, I know that much. But it was inexpensive and it had a couple of features that I liked that other PDUs did not have. One is that it has this nice row of switches on it, and each switch controls a receptacle in the back. Not strictly speaking necessary for my purposes, in fact one master switch would actually serve me better, which this does not have, but ever since I was a kid when computers had those little, um, I guess they were PDUs that sat between the computer and monitor and had all the switches for the various devices, I always liked those, so this brought a little nostalgia to it. Not a good reason to buy a thing, but that's neither here nor there. And it also has a USB charge port, which I'm dubious of in the first place, because this thing was very cheap for what it is. But uh, I figured, what the hell. Then I checked the reviews, and the top rated review was someone who said this is a fire hazard, and it actually started smoking and went a bit on fire, perhaps. And I found that alarming. So I didn't buy this to use it. I bought this to make a video about it, because as soon as someone says this thing's a fire hazard, that's a good reason to stay away from the product, even if they might not be right. But this guy showed pictures, and it appeared to be accurate. So, I wanted to see for myself and help warn the people, like this guy was, and also hopefully educate you about what to look for in a PDU, and wire sizes and other things like that in general. So, that's what we're going to get into in this video. Um, yeah, so have your watching shoes on, because this might be a long one. We'll see. Now. The very first thing I noticed when I opened the box, which, here we go, comes with a manual. I mean, not that important, but it actually is important for a reason we'll see in a second. And a power cord. Now, this power cord looks like any old power cord you get with a computer or other electronic device. It has a standard North American type plug on it, grounded, and a, what you would call a standard computer type receptacle on the other end. I honestly forget if this is a C13 or C14 or what, I'll put it on the screen here. But at any rate, this plug and this receptacle are both rated at 15 amps. Like this is the 15 amp design for this type of plug, uh, for, I should say for this type of plug and this receptacle. There is another type of cord for connecting computers and other such devices. And it has a connector that looks like this completely different, incompatible, so you can't accidentally plug the wrong one in. And this is rated for 20 amps. Now, that's usually not a problem in that most computers and other electronic devices around the home take far less than 15 amps. And as such, these cords are usually underrated. Now, this one's shockingly underrated. This one is an 18-gauge cord. Now, if we whip out our handy-dandy guide to ampacity for these type of, con of cords. This is uh, based on UL specifications. I figure it's as good as any to go by. An 18 gauge cord set is rated for 10 amps. Assuming two current carrying conductors, which this is, and assuming a certain type of jacket, which this has. Although this section of the chart is actually for a cord with a different jacket, but we don't need to get into that right now. Suffice to say that regardless, this is the ampacity rating. 10 amps for a cord that's 0 to 50 feet, which this obviously is. 10 amps would be fine for a computer, or for a television, or any other thing like that, I don't know. Um, not for a toaster oven, for example, and definitely not for a PDU, because a PDU will have multiple things plugged into it. And this is actually intended for DJs, where they might want to turn on each light individually. Not so good for the computer industry, which is, you know, I'm using this actually for video production. But, if this thing is only rated at 10 amps, then this cord is fine. It's a 10 amp cord. So, for example, if the PDU had a 10 amp breaker in it, or 10 amp fuse, I would be okay with this cord. I wouldn't be super happy because it's the very bare minimum of what you could possibly have. However, if we look in their uh, handy dandy instruction manual, the P59U has a 15 amp replaceable fuse located just below the power supply. If you actually load this thing to its specified maximum, you're exceeding this cord's tolerances by 5 amps, which I'm guessing is probably going to be enough to melt it and start a light fire. And we'll be testing that in just a moment. So for this PDU, 
I would want a 14 gauge cable because that has an ampacity rating of 18 amps. 15 is less than that, that's fine. The next smallest, con uh, the next smallest conductor size would be 16 gauge, only rated at 13 amps. So we want a 15 amp rated cable for this. So right away, I wouldn't throw this out personally, I would use this for something else that I know is gonna be low current. But so far this is off to a bad start and right out of the box without even looking at it, this is a fire hazard. Okay, now first of all, this feels very cheap. It's very lightweight. It's, um, it just doesn't feel like quality. And this is actually the first time I've taken it out of the box. Now it's held together with a bunch of screws on all sides, so let me open this up and we'll skip ahead. Now these screws are already a concern. They're not a mark of quality when you use self-tapping screws. Um, I don't know, not too happy with that, but again, for the price, I mean, what do you really expect? All right, so on the back, we got nine receptacles, and likewise, the nine switches in the front. We have a common neutral bus coming from the power connector here across to this circuit board, which I guess has a common neutral all the way across. And then the hot or live conductor comes from the plug or receptacle. I don't know really which this is called because it's male, but it's uh, more of a receptacle than a plug. Sorry if I'm using the wrong terminology. Um, just pardon me on that one. And so it comes out, goes to a common bus on this circuit board that's connected to the switches. And then each switch is then wired to each receptacle on the back. I didn't really expect to see PCBs in there, but there you go. And then there's also a board in the back here for the USB charging port. And I'll give a brief look at that. I'm not too concerned with that. I mean, based on the quality of this thing overall, I doubt that's gonna be a high quality USB power supply. I wouldn't trust any of my valuable devices to this. Um, I might use it to charge a USB power bank, but I would not use it to, to power my phone, for example. Now, one thing which right away, I can just tell off the bat is terrible about this. This is the grounding conductor. It comes from the grounding pin on this uh, plug receptacle thing goes up to the chassis. At least the chassis is grounded. That's nice. And then goes across to each of the receptacles in turn. It's very thin and it's clearly aluminum or something or some alloy similar to aluminum. Um, that's way undersized because if you have a dead short from live to ground, this is just going to disappear. I mean, it's basically fuse wire and then you no longer have a ground on any of your equipment or on the chassis. Not cool. Now this internal wiring is also a concern. Now panel wiring is generally rated at a higher ampacity for wire gauge, but you know, I, again, I always like it better when they oversize wiring. Ugh. This is 20 gauge wire according to the labeling. 20 gauge wire for each of these. Now just, uh, let's say it was in a cord set. 20 gauge doesn't even appear on this chart. But we can imagine, I mean, 18, 13, 10 amps. I'll look it up, I'll put it below what the actual opacity rating is for panel wiring. Also soldered onto the power connector back here and that's a really poor quality solder job I mean like they they really made a mess of that so that might heat up right at that point too if that doesn't have a good connection uh, yeah very disappointing and then the load that I'm gonna plug into is on this giant s cable which has a splitter on the end which is going to a space heater, a 250 watt halogen light and a 150 watt halogen light. These add up to just under 15 amps. Switch that to amps, make sure that's reset. Okay, now this should be live, so I'm gonna be very careful handling it. And these switches light up, but very dimly. I'm not even sure if you're gonna be able to see them on camera. That's off, that's on. If I cup it and hold it to my eye, I could see the light. Um, not a very good indicator at all. 
it looks like they use blue neons, which are generally very dim in of themselves. Now, by the way, this uh, wire does not go directly to the receptacle. It actually goes to the printed circuit board first and then jumps from that to the receptacle. So if the pads on the PCB are undersized, that's also a potential point of failure. I don't know, I can't tell the thickness of them, so we'll see what melts down first, if anything. Oh, definitely. Big whiff of electrical burning smell of the insulation uh, starting to melt down right away. Okay, this, this is getting nice and warm again. Yeah, it's getting a little warm, but that's the 18 gauge cable, or wire. I keep calling it a cable, that's a wire. Oh, I should have broken this out earlier. This is a non-contact thermometer of the generic kind you can get on eBay or AliExpress or anything like that. Um, that is around 38 degrees Celsius, which is 100 degrees Fahrenheit. That's not very hot. Oh, 122. I'm going to stick with Fahrenheit for now. Unfortunately, this isn't exactly a precision instrument. I got as high as 146 there by the PCB. Okay, on the PCB by the switch, you're not really going to be able to see this. There you go. 100, what was that? 158? 160? Yeah, so maybe it's the PCB at the front that's starting to melt down first. I would say the temperature in here, the ambient temperature with the space heater and this load running is now probably about 76, 77 degrees. So it's not that much above ambient over on that side. Now this is really starting to smell. All right, small update. This thing has been going for a few minutes more now and uh, it's getting hotter and hotter. Before I can only really feel the heat with my face and I was also leaning down to smell it. The smell has gotten much, much worse, and now I can feel the heat from like way up here. One thing I did notice, I jiggled the power connector a little bit. Actually, let me, safely as possible, bring this to the other camera. Hopefully you'll be able to see this. Um, if I wiggle this, if I wiggle the plug here, it's actually wiggling the plastic of this connector inside. The plastic's getting high enough to start melting. Um, I hope you can see that. If you can't, the uh, live pin on the connector on the back of it is actually moving in and out with the plastic. The plastic is actually bulging in and out as I move this around. So that doesn't have long to go probably. And it, and it just smells like burning plastic, not even like burning insulation. So that's definitely the plug itself melting down. And uh, I'm actually going to somewhat carefully keep that probe away from anything. I'm going to just uh, poke at this a little bit. Oh, yeah, that plastic is really soft, like not dripping soft, but I can deform it just by gently touching it with this probe. So that's not good. Um, on the output side, the plastic's holding up pretty well. This plug is getting quite, well, I wouldn't say hot. It's, it's very warm, but I think... This 12 gauge cord is sinking away the heat pretty well. Like it's not warm at all. It's room temperature on, uh, on this end. Sorry, that wasn't really in that camera shot, but it's room temperature over here, but it's warm over here. That's my meter shutting off. Um, and I, the heat's not coming from this. This is a high quality cord. Um, it's coming from the connector there. Probably shouldn't poke my finger that close to the live circuitry, but yeah. Oh, and the 18 gauge cord here, it's, uh, it's getting quite hot. I mean, I could, I could touch it, but not for very long. Okay, yet another development here. It's been another few minutes and uh, this plastic has gotten even meltier. I mean, I can actually just push Maybe I can even take a little chunk out of it using the probe without too much force at all. Um, one other thing of import is the solder joint on the power connector between the hot lead and the connector itself has separated. So there's no solder right now joining that wire to the connector. It's just sort of passing current uh, through just uh, 
you know, vague physical contact. So that might be the cause of that whole thing getting very hot. And it continues to smell terrible. Um, this wire is still very hot. And the PCB is definitely heating up because I can feel heat across the entire length of this now. And over here, it's nice and cool because there's no current flowing through this section. I only had one camera rolling just to save memory cards. And uh, yeah, we got some sparks from here. And apparently it was very flaky because that caused the connection to become intermittent, caused some sparking, and then it cut out. Why it cut out, I'm not really sure because it appears to still have a, a physical contact with the connector. It might have been the internal fuse. So check that out in a second. And you know what, let me just power it up again, um, just for argument's sake and see what happens but now it's stabilized back to 14.65 amps. And I'm just gonna jiggle the wire that connects to the power in. And we'll see what happens. Ah, there we go. Whoa, okay. Yeah, all I did was jiggle that wire. That, I didn't mess with this at all. That's the way I found it and that sort of horrible loose state yeah this cord's very warm everything's very warm um, it really appears to be oh made a little bit of a mess in here too okay so yeah the um, the power connector here really melted down um, quite badly ow shoot <laughs> those pins are really hot I shouldn't have touched those um, yeah, you can see evidence of the melting internally. It's actually out of shape a little bit. I'm going to take some pictures of that so that you can see that close up. Um, yeah, and I'm going to remove this whole thing so we can take a better look at it. And yeah, the whole PCB, uh, right in here, very hot. Like, I don't want to touch it for too long hot. And, um, the one thing I will say, the insulation on these, uh, wires here are is quite good the wire is uh, quite warm because it's only 20 gauge but uh, the insulation when, I, when it was hot I poked at it with the probe a couple times just to see if I could stab a hole in it and I couldn't so this insulation uh, will stand a high amount of heat let's see what it's rated at it's rated at 105 Celsius so uh, but it, it seems to be reasonable quality at least in, the, in that regard even if it's undersized but yeah, the power connector appears to be the real problem. And that is where the Amazon user that had a problem with this uh, saw it melt down as well. So clearly not just my unit and uh, definitely a design problem with this. Although really based on the amount of heat that was coming off the entire thing um, and the receptacle, I wouldn't trust this at all, even if that problem didn't exist. All right, so it's been a few days or weeks or whatever it's been later, and uh, that wasn't as exciting as I hoped it would be. I hope we had more uh, fire and flames and melting down of stuff, but I also don't want to uh, give up on this thing because even though it is kind of chintzy and it definitely doesn't uh, support its rated capacity, um, there's a really simple fix for that, and this comes with a fuse module. And this plug got kind of effed up with all the uh, melting and whatnot that went on. So I got a replacement plug for this with a 10 amp fuse. And this should be just fine at 10 amps. So now I will swap that out and then have a working thing, hopefully, that doesn't light on fire spontaneously. All right, so I got this thing from Amazon. It was like five bucks. Comes with a fuse, has a new fuse holder in it and uh, the cap for the fuse holder. So it's just a matter of soldering this in place of that and hoping that it fits, which I actually didn't check, but it's a pretty common design. Yeah, it looks like it'll fit right in that slot. So not a problem. Great. Because they're self-tapping screws that either, oh, there's a bit of solder in there. Um, these little self-tapping screws are just going into this very thin metal here 
doesn't give a really reliable connection. I mean, I guess good enough, but I can see this coming loose after pulling a power cord in and out of it a few times. So why doesn't this want to come out? Oh, yeah. This thing got so deformed on the bottom, it doesn't want to come out of this hole. Oh, no. There we go. But there we go. Yeah, and um, see so yeah, the old plug, pretty messed up. You can see how much it melted right there. And right there too. And actually, I wonder what fuse, I didn't actually look at what fuse this has inside. I'm gonna guess it's 15 amp because that's what the thing was supposed to be rated. Ah, really? Okay, that is how this comes out, right? I mean, there's no fucking trick to it. Oh, you know what? The body of this is so melted that I don't think I'll ever be able to pull that out. In fact, it might be fused in here. Anyway, here's what it should look like. Nice and new. Although this one actually feels a little cheaper than that one. I don't know. Could just be me. So this is going to get thrown in there like that. See, even on the back of this, it says put a 15 amp fuse in this. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't. All right. And now one thing that's kind of uh, interesting here that I didn't notice before is that this has double insulated uh, cord, a uh, double insulated uh, wire on here. You can see the black sheathing on the outside and then some white insulation beyond that. But this also is, it's gotta be aluminum. So not that great in that sense. Yeah, it broke right off the board. That's just great. Yeah, wonderful. The wire just broke loose from this little solder pad on the board. And uh, it looks like only, oh, that's embarrassing. See, I don't know if we get a good shot of this, but let me uh, angle it to the camera there as best as possible. See, this little solder pad is where that just, uh, see this little solder pad here is where that just fell off of. And the wire sticking through the solder pad, or the solder through hole, is a lot thinner than this. It looks like they only actually put a few strands of this stranded cable through that hole which uh you know i mean the solder kind of builds up around it so it should in theory connect it well but yeah it looks like it did the same thing with the uh with the red wire on every single one of these connections yeah very not cool right there this red wire is copper or at least copper coated aluminum whereas the, this one has no coating at all in fact, I think this really is copper. Huh. Weird. So, anyway, the only way I could get that wire through there was by taking off like a third of the strands, which I'm not too happy about because that's going to reduce this thing's rating even further. And I'm not even sure what this circuit board could be considered to be rated at. Also, in my zeal, I happened to nick the insulation on that red wire down there. That's entirely my fault. I can't blame that on this device, of course. Um, not the best tape job in the world, but um, to be honest, at this point, I don't even know if I'm gonna use this thing in real life because uh, I just don't trust it. All right, now if you're wondering what the wire strip is doing in there, those are holding the red wire high up off the uh, bottom of the chassis so that it's nowhere near shorting out under there. Yeah, it looks like a very nice solder joint, a lot better than what they had in there in the first place. Uh, hmm. Yeah, it's not going to come out well on camera, but uh, yeah, maybe, ah, there you go. You can kind of see it there. If you're not absolutely confident about a solder joint that you're making um, with this kind of voltage and amperage, uh, reflow it. I mean, it can't hurt to be sure. But like I said, this one looks quite nice. Um, sorry, I forgot my head in there. I know you might not be able to see it too well on camera, but uh, it meets my approval anyway. And frankly, it looks a bit nicer than a lot of their solder joints that this came with. So now the ground wire is a bit short here. I'm going to reuse their shitty, like really thin grounding wire, which I'm not happy about. Um, like I said, I'm not really going to be using this in real life, uh, this is just sort of to make the point that this could be repaired and made safe.
but uh, yeah, I would definitely, if I was going to use it, replace the grounding wire here. That flew a little more. Ooh, that actually came out really nice. So in a situation like that, where the wire is considerably smaller than the hole that it's going into, it's easy to leave some extra space around the wire where you can still see through as a hole. But the problem is then you don't have anything really holding the wire from moving this way, away from uh, the connector and towards the hole. So it's, uh, it doesn't make for as good a joint. I like to fill in that hole completely. And that is looking good. So, yeah, I mean, it's kind of back in operation. That's the only thing that's really wrong with it. I mean, the other reason I don't necessarily want to use this in real life is because I exposed all this to a decent amount of thermal stress by running it at, well, its rated capacity. And a lot of this got quite warm, including these circuit boards in here. And they could be damaged by the excess heat. Um, could have delaminated slightly in certain points and I might not be able to see it. Uh, so I just don't trust this thing at all anymore. I mean, I guess if I really knew I was only gonna run light loads off of it, yeah, yeah, but, but no. I mean, it's cheap crap like this that's just pointless to buy in the first place. Oh, shit. So anyway, pop the fuse in the fuse holder, nice and centered, and then, is this right side up? No, it's not and then the fuse holder goes in the dealy. I have an absolute ass load of these things. And this is actually a 10 footer, which is pretty nice. Uh, you know what, turn the soldering iron off so I don't melt. Okay, so this is live and I gotta be very careful not to touch anything inside of here. Oh, and uh, yeah, so there it is with power. There we go, 121 volts, seems reasonable. And, ah, come on now. Jeez Louise, 121 volts. So, yeah, should have continuity across the whole thing. That's just wonderful. So then again, very gingerly, since this whole thing's live, switches are lit up. It's rather hard to see, actually, because they're very dimly lit. Um, yeah, you can kind of see it there. Not exactly a huge plus. Um, one thing I didn't talk about is it has a USB receptacle on it for charging. I, I'm not even going to bother. I mean, I kind of want to test that, but uh, I just have a feeling it's going to be crap. There's a circuit board in there that just looks to be of poor quality. Like, there's a lot of uh, resin on there, or rosin. There's a lot of flux on there anyway does not look like a quality product. I wouldn't trust my cell phone in this thing or anything that's expensive. I mean, I guess if you wanted to use an LED light, like one of those um, gooseneck lights off of this to light your equipment rack, that would be just fine because you're not risking anything. But uh, yeah, let me de-energize this before I have a big disaster on my hands and electrocute myself. Or it's unlikely I'd electrocute myself, but it's possible. More likely I'd just shock myself. I think you only get electrocuted if you die from it. It's like drowning. You can have a near drowning or an actual drowning, but uh, yeah, you can't live, to, you can't tell the tale if you actually drown. All right, well anyway, next up, I'm gonna put the cover on this and then I will show you what a real power distribution unit should look like. Actually, you know what? I'm not even gonna bother putting the cover on it. I'm not gonna use this thing. It sucks. All right, here it is. This I ordered after I discovered that thing, this thing here, was utter crap, because this seemed to be fairly legitimate. It's made by CyberPower, which, I don't know if you've heard of them, they, they're kind of a competitor for APC and um, Triplight. Their stuff is generally cheaper than APC and Triplight stuff, but uh, in my experience, they make high quality UPSs. This is my first PDU from them. But I'll tell you the, the one thing you can notice just from the package without even opening it, this, even without the cord, weighs a hell of a lot more than this, which most likely means the chassis is a lot thicker. Plus this is also supposed to have surge protection in it, which this does not, uh, which isn't gonna add too much in the way of weight depending on what they have in there. But, um, so I haven't even opened this, but right away, I could tell you this is a quality product just by the feel. And look at this power cord, like my issue, with this cheap piece of shit was that it was rated at 15 amps and clearly didn't support that rating. And you could plug any old 
power cord into it that might not be able to support that kind of load. Like this one is probably not good for 15 amps just based on its thickness. This cable, I mean, look how thick it is. And Cyber Power is a reputable brand, even though the brand name I think is kind of jokey. I mean, Cyber Power. But let's see, this cord is, oh, come on, 12 gauge. This is a 12 gauge cord, according to them, and it looks like a 12 gauge cord. I mean, you can just tell by the thickness. I mean, this is probably 18 gauge. Yeah, again, reputable manufacturer, so I'm fairly well assured that this is actually 12 gauge on the inside. Now, this is rated at 20 amps, by the way. You can see it has a NEMA style, yeah, there we go, 20 amp plug on it, which for a lot of people might be inconvenient. I have a lot of 20 amp receptacles around here, so that's not too bad. Another nice thing about this is the length of the cord. Um, I don't remember how long this is supposed to be, but looks to me just offhand to be about 15 feet, maybe 12. Okay, also take a look at these, the receptacles in the back. These are proper receptacle units, like the kind you'd find in a commercial building. I mean, they feel like they're made of good, pl good quality plastic. Um, they look very heavy. I'm sure they have a good, oh yeah, nice and solid, um, eh, reasonably good holding. Not, not, as, not the best in the world, but uh, yeah, a decent amount of tension. Before I open it up, a couple more features. Uh, first of all, I love this. It has a cover for the switch because a lot of times when you have things racked, you don't want to accidentally shut it off. This is kind of a cheap, flimsy cover. I would like something a little more quality, but like I said, I'm not really reviewing this, so never mind. But um, yeah, also circuit breaker instead of a fuse. I mean, this really shouldn't trip in normal operation, but if you do, it's nice to know you won't have to find a fuse or go out and buy one. Also two receptacles on the front, I like that. Obviously the main area where this differs from this is it's not individually switched for each receptacle, but eh, I mean, I'd rather have a high quality PDU than one with a bunch of switches on it that sucks. So looks like this should be pretty easy to take apart. Just a bunch of screws and we will flash forward now. And ta-da. Okay, wow. Now this is pretty decent. Okay, so let's see. We got a chunky ass surge suppression module there. And uh, yeah, I'm not actually gonna disassemble it to the point where I'm gonna show you everything on there, but there's a giant choke. There's some, uh, I don't know if those are varistors or what, but uh, yeah, anyway, a nice looking board, um, single sided old-fashioned looking couple of transistors too uh, la, la, la. oh those are for the uh, supply to control the LEDs on the front they're wired there with uh, these thin gauge wire now even these thin gauge wires that drive the LEDs are still 22 gauge which is actually overkill for driving an LED but overkill is always a good thing and look I was complaining one of the things I was complaining about on this guy was look at this grounding wire I mean that's such a thin gauge, I don't even know what gauge that is offhand. But this, this looks like a 12 gauge grounding wire. And not only that, the grounding, it's grounded to the chassis in the front, this bottom part of the chassis, and then it has a separate connection to the top of the chassis. Even though most likely in any like reasonable circumstance, this would probably just end up being adequately bonded to this just by virtue of the screws connecting them. I mean, it's uh, enameled metal, but you know, the screws are gonna tear into the enamel a little bit, but you don't wanna rely on that. That would just be bad practice. So the fact they have this extra bonding wire uh, to the top plate, which incidentally, this does not have, uh, that's a real touch of class and touch of quality right there. Also, this is substantially thicker metal than the other one is made out of. Let's see how this is wired. We got the power input cord coming in over here which goes straight into the circuit breaker on the front on the hot lead, of course, as it should be. Uh, then after the circuit breaker, it goes to the switch. So even if the breaker pops, the switch is actually disconnected too. Uh, then from the switch, it goes over to the surge suppression module. And uh, like I said, I'm not really gonna go into what's in there because I don't wanna take this whole thing apart to that degree. Um, interestingly though, the surge suppression module is actually held in there by uh, 
there's a wire going through two of the solder through holes, uh, through two of the boards through holes in kind of a, uh, a loop, not a loop, a U shape. And then it pokes into the back of this receptacle, which is the front receptacle on the unit. So this entire surge suppression module is actually just being held in place by the screws on the side of this receptacle, which is interesting. Um, I don't know that I'm the hugest fan of that just because the only thing ultimately holding all of that on and holding this receptacle on is this one screw right in the middle of the receptacle block. So, uh, the receptacle unit. So, I don't know. I mean, it, not too much that can go wrong with that design, I suppose. Uh, I guess I'm just being a little picky. But uh, yeah, this just looks well made. Um, let me see if I can get an idea of the gauge on these interconnection wires. Uh, let me just stick my, oh, 12 gauge, okay. This white one's clearly labeled as 12 gauge and these black ones look to be the same size. So I'm gonna say logically they're 12 gauge. Now 12 gauge is what you would expect for tw to support a 20 amp load for building wiring and most any cord set. Uh, actually, a cord set doesn't even need to be 12 gauge to be rated at 20 amps. So 12 gauge is actually overkill for this application, but I like to see overkill because heavier gauge, always a good thing, always better. Uh, so anyway, the, the trace in the black wire, the hot wire goes into the surge suppression module, comes out of there and then into the back of the first receptacle where then it jumps from the first receptacle unit to the second one, to the third one, to the fourth one, to the fifth one. And the neutral wire does the same thing from one to the other. And then it looks like, yeah, the ground wire is, or the grounding wire is looped into each receptacle unit individually, and then comes back around to the front receptacle unit, where it's also, it's got a nice heavy lug on the end of the green wire. And yeah, this is, uh, see, this is very well made. This is what you'd want to see in a PDU. And just incidentally, the grounding wire comes in from the cord set, and it looks like that's a full 12 gauge. It hits a lug going right through the back of the unit. And then from that lug, it comes around and forks off one to the top of the unit, and then it jumps from receptacle unit to receptacle unit, and like I said, back around the front to this receptacle unit. Um, yeah, and then it has these little plastic tabs here because they're the screws of the receptacle unit in there, which, uh, now even though these are coming in the back of the receptacle units, these are not like the cheap kind of backstab units that you get for uh, household use. These actually, uh, the screws compress the wire in there, so it actually uh, is held in there securely. So anyway, these plastic tabs cover those screws, I guess just uh, in case they come loose, they could theoretically hit the outside of the chassis. So this keeps that from happening. That's a touch of class as well. This is just paper card here. Uh, strictly speaking, I don't know why, oh, I guess that's just to keep the back of the circuit board off of the yoke of this receptacle unit, which goes around the whole back of it, which, is a good sign. It means they're quality receptacles if, they, if the yoke goes completely around the outside and the back of it. And it looks like it's a pretty heavy gauge yoke as well. So yeah, again, quality product all around. This is absolutely something I would trust to run in my home and bu or business or my home and business if they're both in the same place, which they sometimes are. So yeah, um, cyber power, definitely a quality product right here absolutely trustworthy just based on uh, what I can observe inside. Very heavy gauge chassis. This is everything that you'd want to see. This is everything you don't want to see. This is a fire hazard in the making. And I mean, I don't know if that's libelous or slanderous. I forget which one is which. Um, if the manufacturer could sue me for saying this is a fire hazard, but uh, I mean, I'd love to see them try. No, actually, you know what? In this overly litigious society, I don't want to bring that on myself, but seriously, let's just say I wouldn't trust this thing. In my opinion, as a random guy on YouTube, this is a fire hazard. Don't buy it. I even forgot what it's called. The Technical Pro PS9U Power Supply. Anyway, I think that's everything I wanted to cover here. Um, this will be going in the trash, like I said. This will be going into service somewhere on some rack. Um, oh. One more good thing about this that I just kind of noticed is that the rack ears are actually integral to the front plate, which means, and it's like I said, it's fairly thick steel, nice and a quality touch. This has rack ears that 
attached to the unit using three chintzy um, self-tapping screws, which means this thing could also come loose in the rack and it's just overall a shitty thing. Um, I think I got this on sale too, this uh, Cyber Power one. So this was only about maybe a third more the cost, but uh, spend the extra money. That's my ultimate advice. When it comes to power strips, power distribution units, spend the extra money. You're probably buying higher quality for that money, unless you're getting ripped off for some other reason. So uh, yeah, and generally speaking, by the way, I also want to note this. If you're trying to judge to uh, power strips, power distribution units, whatever you want to call them, the heavier one is usually the one to go for, the physically heavier one. Because if they're willing to spend the extra money on a heavier duty case, or the weight could be coming from the extra heavy gauge wiring or uh, bus bars that are inside of it. In either case, it's probably the better unit, given, you know, if they're the same size. Obviously, if, they're, if one's bigger physically than the other, that might be heavier for that reason. But, I mean, you can generally judge when you're holding something how heavy it is, how dense it is, and the dense... Literally weigh them. Weigh your choices. Heavier one, more expensive one, probably better quality. Can't guarantee that, but almost certainly. Um, with that little piece of advice for what it's worth, here in my basement, uh, just being a random guy, not an electrician specifically, uh, take it for what it's worth. And thanks for watching, and uh, I don't know, don't subscribe, I make shitty videos usually and barely release any, so, I don't know, thumbs up, thumbs down, who really gives a shit? Man, I'm so bad at ending these videos. Ah. Alright. That's probably enough. I've probably annoyed people sufficiently by now. Uh music and fade to black. Wait, I already faded to black, probably. Alright, let me stop recording now.